Hi, Neil Spears here. So I just did a great interview with photographer John Wills. He's a fantastic photographer. So please enjoy and do watch to the end when he gives the piece of advice that he wished he'd known when he started his business. Spears here. I have the great pleasure and honor of interviewing a uh, photographer I've known for quite a while, John Wills of John Wills Photography and a few other sites. We'll put all the sites that he has down in the description for this video so that you can go check them out. Uh, he does a lot of interesting kinds of photography and so we're going to get into talking to him about how he has gone with his career. So John, how are you doing today? Well buddy, thanks for having me on. Oh, my pleasure. So let's start with the easy, the softball questions. How long have you been doing professional photography? Uh, full time now for just over um, 10 years now, but I was doing it part time before that. Oh, yeah. um, and then uh, the, the company that I was working for for 23 years went bankrupt. So I had a baby on the way. My wife and I had just bought a house. So we uh, decided this was the time for me to <laughs> give her a go and uh, have it look back. And it's gone well for you by all accounts. The uh, you've won. yeah, you know, as with most businesses, uh, being an entrepreneur, self-employed, there's it's like a roller coaster ride. There's there's fabulous days, and then uh, the downhill. And uh, but like all businesses, and and uh, but yeah, I love uh, I love doing this for a living, and, and and carving out a niche for myself. Just need this uh, COVID to uh, disappear a little bit so that I can reopen again. So. Yeah, most of us are saying that, yeah. Yeah, we're getting close. So what made you want to get into photography? Uh, originally, I bought my first uh, DSLR um, primarily for wildlife photography. I do a lot of canoeing and interior camping trips mm -hmm. and uh, was always seeing wildlife, like moose and, and everything like that on our canoeing trips and wanted a DSLR. So I think my first one was in Olympus E500 or something like that and I had a zoom lens for it and and then just progressed from there. Just kept sucking you into the wanting to do more and more with it. That's awesome. So do you have a area that you like to specialize in? Uh, the, the majority of my my revenue for my business is from families and kids in, in all aspects of those. I do um, all different uh, Santa photos, enchanted forest, families, uh, um, anything to do with uh, with families and kids. I also uh, do quite a few business headshots. Mm -hmm. um, I also have a boudoir website that probably accounts for about twenty five percent of my revenue. What brought you into those areas? What like what brought you into families and kids in the first place? Uh, well, being a dad and a husband for one. Um, uh, early in my career, I, I shot a lot of weddings. I was shooting on average anywhere between twenty five and forty weddings a year. And then as I got older, um, I had a hard time relating to pride. So, um, but what I could do is I could relate to moms and dads and kids, um, which is where I am in my life. I'm happily married, have an amazing 10 year old son. So I can totally get what parents are going through and can relate to them. So I no longer shoot weddings. You have a personal studio. Uh, yeah, so we bought this house. Um, actually, we had bought it just as we were expecting our son, and then I lost my job. So we had this big house that we bought that had an addition put on that we had planned on using for a studio. So, um, yeah, there's a studio in the back of our house, which works out really, really nice. Nice. Is that where you do the most majority of your work? Most of my family uh, is done on location, um, but all my promotions, like all my Christmas photos and boudoir uh headshots and all that are typically done in the studio yes those enchanted forest ones are a little hard to do on location i imagine yeah absolutely it's a lot of gear to carry around <laughs> yeah for those of you watching you should go check out his enchanted forest series it's uh pretty cool yeah uh, the kids love it and, and yeah, i think even more so the moms and the grandmothers love yeah. them as well my whole studio is converted into this huge magical set um, and uh, we have a lot of fun with the kids, that's for sure. Yeah, and of course, you turn that into Santa's studio on at Christmas we, time. And we do the uh, the ultimate Santa experience, and that's the usually the last week of 
of October and the first two weeks of November. And again, my whole studio is converted into a magical Christmas uh, cabin where we have a, a real Santa, real beard, and our kids spend 45 minutes uh, with Santa. We go through a whole skit and all that kind of stuff. And, and again, the kids love it, but I think the parents like it even more. So, <laughs> Yeah, they probably get quite the kick out of it. How did you get into doing those kinds of more specialized photography? That's a great question. Uh, for the most part, it was wanting to be a little different than than most, I think. And having a studio space that I can, can do it. I'm pretty good with studio lighting, so all that didn't uh, shy me away from it. I think watching my son grow up, and, and, and looking at all his creative and, and um, fantasy playing and all that kind of stuff drove me to wanting to do things more for kids that were very specialized. And, but I still do lots of regular, regular <laughs> child portraits, but the specialized ones that I do um, seem to be very, very popular. So in your studio, uh, is there a piece of gear that you just couldn't live without? Is there something that that just really excites you to use? Yeah, not really. Um, I still use old gear. I'm still, the most most of my shooting is done with an old D3S that I bought used. Uh, the rubber's falling off. I have an old uh, 70 to 200 uh, millimeter 2.8. And again, the rubber's falling off it. I use Alien B lights that they're probably eight or nine years old. I don't even use a, a, a light meter anymore. I just, go by by feel on the back of the camera. I guess maybe if if I had a thing, the sound system in the studio where I don't like to shoot with quiet. So even in the Enchanted Forest, there's music playing, Santa, there's Christmas music playing. Yeah. When I have uh, headshot clients coming up, I have lots of good upbeat music, boudoir the same way, so that it's not quiet in the studio. There's actually live, lots of loud music. So I don't think I could live without my, stu my uh, sound system that's down in there. So do you belong to any organizations that help you kind of progress in your career? Yeah, so I'm a, a proud member of Professional Scholars of Canada. I think that's where you and I met years ago, if I remember correctly, Neil. Um, I've been members of other organizations, but we didn't draw much from them. I have my Master of Photographic Arts through the PPOC. I've won many awards and, and all that kind of stuff. So I don't even know how long I've been a member, seven or eight years, maybe. Yeah, I know you've won the Portrait Photographer of the Year more than once. Yes, I've been fortunate uh, Ontario Portrait Photographer of the Year twice. I was also a finalist for Canada's uh, Top Portrait Photographer five years ago. I can't even remember now. <laughs> so what do you think that belonging to the PPOC brings to your business and to your, your photography? Uh, another great question. You know, it's something that I, I, I analyze every year. What am I getting out of it? And I think the most that I get out of it is the friendships and the community of other um, like-minded people. I have a mastermind group that uh, I'm part of with two other photographers from the PPOC, and we meet once a week. Um, we're, we're all sole proprietors, so we're all the one-man show, and we help each other solve problems that you know I might not be able to solve by myself being a one-man show. The competitions are fun. I think they push me a little bit to, to get better and try new things. Uh, my competition photographs are typically different than what I actually shoot for uh, uh, for money for clients um, so that keeps my creativity going but then I think the, the the biggest part of the PPOC is the network just having access to so many great photographers so actually I was going to ask about other mentors and and such so you have the mastermind group and you've been doing that for quite a while yeah off and on um, I have a really good friend Kirk Saint uh, who him and I have been doing it off and on for five years now and we now have uh, a lovely woman that's joined our group and and she keeps us uh, in check in our meetings and all that which is very very good Cheryl Strauss uh, she's from your province actually and uh, yeah like I say every Monday we meet for sometimes it's uh, 45 minutes sometimes our meetings end up being three hours it depends on you know, what we're diving into and the energy we have I always feel after those meetings energized for my business because you feed off of each other and get excited for your business again well, that's awesome. Let's talk a little bit about your business side of it, because this this series that I'm doing is about creating a strong business. What kind of things do you do to promote your studio and your photography? Most of my clients uh, find me via Google, I think. My SEO does fairly well for the website. It can always be better. Uh, word of mouth. Uh, so clients like what I've done and the word of mouth and also social media, um, Facebook, uh, a little bit of Twitter. I get business headshots through LinkedIn. 
I started using that more and it seems to be working for my business headshots. I don't advertise anywhere. I've tried advertising on Facebook and either I suck at it or it just doesn't work for my business because yeah. I don't seem to get the right clientele from Facebook. So do you say the social media posting, is that like Instagram or Facebook or? Yeah, I use both. Um, not as much as I should. I'm probably on Facebook more than Instagram. I just find that communicating with people on there, just even by wishing happy birthday, um, keeps you relative in their minds. Mm -hmm. uh, Instagram is fun to post your pictures and whatnot, but I think the communication that you can have on Facebook, it's not just about posting photographs. Um, I don't post a lot of photographs on my personal page. It's more about my life, yeah. my wife and my son, my fishing, my other hobbies and all that kind of stuff. Um, that's about how I use social media. So has there been anything that you've tried for promotion that has failed terribly? For the most part, Facebook ads. Like, yeah. I just can't figure them out. I can't figure out how to get the right clientele through that. As far as advertising, I haven't done a lot. I've, I've done shows when I was doing weddings. I did wedding shows. I used to get weddings and boudoir through them. I've tried the home shows. I uh, didn't do very well with them, but it was also a, a bad year as far as weather, and that can determine how many people come to a home show. Primarily, I'm just leaning on my website and uh, my networking. One last question before I let you go. What would you have liked to know before you started all? this when I first started trying to make a living at this um, I wasn't charging near enough I was trying to compete at the bottom end I would see somebody post uh, family sessions for x number of dollars so I would undercut them a little bit what I learned is that you've got to separate yourself from other people create a clientele that's willing to pay for a high-end product and a high-end uh, prints that I uh, that I offer my clients so a full service studio that we are. I wish they would have learned more about business and less about taking pretty pictures. Does that make sense? Because I actually know a couple of photographers that can shoot me under the table as far as things, but they actually don't run a profitable business. They're working full-time at other jobs. But I also know photographers that I can shoot them under the table. They're very weak at photography, but blow me out of the water when it comes to marketing and how to run businesses. I'm getting better at the business part of it, as I've learned, but that's something, if I were to tell any new photographer starting out, yes, work on your photography, but learn business. Learn how to properly make money and how much you have to charge and make in a year to actually have a good living at this. And it's possible, I make a good living uh, once we get out of COVID and I can start shooting again. But uh, you know, my studio, I'm, very, I'm profitable, I make a good living and have fun doing it, but uh, yeah, Long answer short, uh, learn more about business. Well, thank you so much for your time. All right, buddy. Thanks for having me. Well, I hope you enjoyed that because, well, you're still around, so I trust you did. Please, if you want to see more like that, let me know in the comments. What would you like to see? More interviews like that? More practical advice? Let me know what you'd like to see. And if you haven't already subscribed, please hit the subscribe, hit the like button, hit the bell to keep notified when I post more like this. I'll be doing lots of content like this in the future. Have a great day. Mm -hmm.